Right guys, we have some updates regarding the new Apple VR slash AR headsets, so let's delve into it. So for the longest time, we've been under the assumption the OS of the headsets is going to be called Reality OS. There's been trademarks of this, we've seen ROS mentioned in codes, and also Reality OS did sound pretty legit. However, now that we're getting closer to the release, we have a report from Mark Gurman telling us that no, Apple's changed their plans and now it's going to be called XROS, or I guess XROS. Now, according to German, Apple's thinking behind this change is because XROS is less generic and it will help the headset stand out more. But to be honest, I disagree with that. I don't think this is a better name. In my opinion, XROS sounds pretty vague compared to, of course, Reality OS, which makes it pretty clear this is something regarding AR and VR, whereas, of course, XR is just confusing. And for those wondering, XR according to Apple does stand for extended reality because obviously this headset's gonna have both AR and VR abilities, but ultimately I don't think a ton of consumers have heard of the term XR. They've heard of reality and AR and VR, so reality OS fits a lot better in my opinion. Also, XROS does not sound as friendly as reality OS in my opinion, so yes, this is a downgrade Please, Apple, don't do this. And like I joked about earlier, XR just reminds me of the iPhone XR, which, of course, was one of the worst iPhone names ever made. Apple themselves were not sure what the R meant, and so adding that to an operating system name is not great. I'm really hoping this is a code name, but the actual name of the OS is actually Reality OS. And yeah, I know German is a very credible source, but to be honest, there has not been any trademark filings for XROS, whereas we have seen trademark filings for Reality OS and an Apple Reality headset, which is what everyone thinks is likely to be the name of the headset. And so yes, I do have my doubts about this report. Actually, scrap that, I was wrong. Tenor OS has been trademarked by a shell company, and in case you're wondering what a shell company is, this is a secret fake company Apple uses to trademark upcoming products that usually prevents leaks like this. But of course, German has already found this, so it's kind of pointless anyways. But yes, I guess XROS could be legit. I still despise it though. Now, as for other features of this headset, German does say there's going to be an app store with this. And so that makes me think that while the announcement of the product might be in early 2023, the release is going to be a lot later because if there's going to be an app store, there needs to be apps and developers need time to make apps and optimize their existing applications for this headset. And so similar to the A12Z Mac Mini kit developers got when the Apple Silicon transition was introduced, there is a chance some developers get some version of the headset they can use to optimize the applications and then we see the final release of the product. And yeah, this has happened in the past. For example, I believe the Apple Watch was introduced in September 2014, but was released in March 2015. So I can see a similar time frame for this new headset. And while the launch might be in early 2023, definitely do not expect Apple to release this to buy anytime soon. Now, German also says in this report, the headset will have new versions of existing apps like Maps and Messages, which have been redesigned for the AR slash VR experience. And also like we were talking about, there will be a software development kit that third party developers can use. Now, like I've said in previous videos, I still don't understand the purpose of this headset getting maps. Why would you need maps on a headset that's gonna remain indoors? I'm not sure myself. I guess Apple can use maps to flex their AR slash VR magic, but I don't think anyone's actually gonna use it. However, I can see messages and FaceTime being pretty popular with this headset. Imagine meeting up with your friends in a virtual world, maybe using a VR version of SharePlay to watch movies in an actual virtual theater, that would be nice. So yeah, I can see the use case for that. And I'm also hoping that Apple can focus on the gaming aspects because that's another big selling point for existing headsets and it would be nice if Apple would jump on boards and get game developers to make the best AR slash VR apps for this headset. Since I'm sure that Apple right now regrets not having a gaming focus with the Mac in the early days, and so having a head start with the gaming aspect on the headset is crucial because if Apple once again neglects that part of the experience, developers are not gonna jump on boards and the lack of any proper game titles on this could sway consumers to other brands. Anyways, finally, for those wondering about the release, 
Quo has been pretty sure that we're gonna see a Chan event for the headset, and that would actually be the first Chan event since the iPhone, so that's pretty massive, but it makes sense if you think about it, this will be a massive release, Apple's first new major product category since the Apple Watch, and so I could see a Jan event for this. And here's hoping it's not virtual and they do have an audience reacting to this live because hearing the reactions of an audience, especially for a new product, is quite exciting in my opinion, so let's hope Apple does a proper old school live event. And also another great thing about having an audience there is of course, once the event's over, they can play around with the headset and give us their first impressions. And that's pretty key because this is a headset. Apple can mention the best specs on stage, but it comes down to the actual experience. And so we need people to use this and give us their thoughts. Also, I do want to say if we don't see a Jan announcement for this, I can also see Apple unveiling this at Dub Dub because initially the announcement's going to be focused on developers and how to create apps for this platform. So a WWDC announcement could make sense. However, like I said, even if we see a Jan or WWDC announcement, expect the actual release date of the product to be much later. In fact, it could be early 2024. Anyways, let's delve into your comments. So at Koa Stink says, whoever made this render, people have noses, make a better render. So this is the render in question. It's quite an infamous render now. It's based on the tidbits we got from the information. And this is actually a fair point there should be a space for your nose. But for some reason, this was not addressed by the information in their reports. However, yes, I'm hoping that future renders do address this. Now, on the contrary, at Mr. Mill 9309 says, the design for what I think it looks like looks beautiful to me. And yeah, I've got to agree, the renders we've seen so far do look nice. It's very minimalistic. It's not as bulky as other headsets. And that makes sense because Apple's products are usually like that. And yeah, overall, I'm down for this design. But of course, as the earlier comment suggested, we should see changes around the nose area because it's going to be pretty uncomfortable if there's not going to be any space for your nose. So Joe says, not one tech event can touch the iconic 2007 Macworld Expo. And yes, I completely agree with this. The iPhone event will forever be the best event Apple's ever held. And while I'm excited for the Apple headset event, without Steve Jobs, it's not going to be a match to the iPhone event. And yeah, I'm keeping my expectations realistic. Anyways, that's about it. But tell me your thoughts regarding this in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the link above on details regarding new home pods. And on that note, see ya peeps.